All right, Dr. Shankopotamus here um, in the uh, in the office. Yeah, you can make fun of the office table if you want. There it is. I'm working on trying to get a new one that's actually made out of wood, but that's been the office table now for almost 10 years. As you can tell, the computer costs a lot more than the office table. Anyway, what we're going to be doing today, um, and thank you all for, for watching and joining me up here. I'm just going to put a new video card in. Pretty simple. Um, I've got a video of building this entire system. Um, if I ever get around to putting that one out there, video card is going to be a lot easier. Um, that's an older video card that I had. I put it in there when I built the whole system. It's been running just fine. But now, and it's a uh, 760, 750 that's in there. Um, today, we're going to be putting in a 1080 Ti, this little bad boy right here. Okay. This is a gigabyte. Here we go. Seam right there, gigabyte. Kind of hard to see on the end there, the reflection, the uh, GeForce GTX. It's a 1080 Ti. This is their um, overclocking gaming edition. Um, I don't game as much as I used to, but uh, started with Pong and worked my way up from there. Tells you no idea how long I've been gaming, but um, not a lot nowadays. Uh, four kids, full-time job, not much time for it. Anyway, I'm going to try to show you all how you uh, replace your video card. It's very easy, very straightforward. Back in the day, took a whole lot of work, took a whole lot of programming, took a whole lot of know-how to uh, make these things work. Nowadays, we got the plug and play. You got Windows 10, which is what I'm running here, um, and it it does a fantastic job just adding on peripherals. So let me go ahead and get a few things set up here for y'all and uh, we'll get started. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's see here. One of the first things you're gonna need working on electronics, you really have gotta get yourself one of these right here, this bad boy, okay? Wrist strap, grounding wrist strap, okay? Get yourself grounded somewhere in here, somewhere up in here. I mean, you can do it without it if you want to take some chances with your expensive equipment. Um, you may find that you broke something and you try to power it back up and it don't work. Um, that's the case. It may be because you weren't using a ground strap and you have absolutely fried your motherboard. Okay, so we got it on here. I will hook it up here in a minute and show you guys how we do it. But as long as you got it on either hand, um, put it on my left because I'm using my right hand to do the work. Um, but as long as you're grounded somewhere off your body, you're going to be okay. Now, as you can tell right now from the lights, we're running, okay? So what we're going to do, um, pretty much just shut it down. I'm going to go into Windows, though, shut it down completely. We'll let the computer um, get all the way shut down. This one takes a little while uh, to get the power all the way off. And then once you've completely shut down, hit your power button on the back, all right? Depending on your setup. Mine's got the power supply in the base down here. It's underneath this cover right here. Some of them got the power supply up here in the top. Um, but always, at least everyone I've ever seen, the button for the power supply is in the back. If you want to take it a step further, once you turn the computer off and the power off, unplug it. Just to be absolutely sure you've got no power coming in while you're removing components. No matter what component you're working on, it's not a bad idea to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and from my screen, which is right over here to your left, um, log in, get in, shut the computer down, and then we'll take our next steps. And I'm sure I could just off a screen, uh, a screen capture, but I'm just going to do this with the video camera. It's quicker, it's easier. One thing, um, at least for Windows, when you're working, I'm working on a Windows 10 right here. Sleep, you're not going to put it to sleep. Okay, actually, I despise the sleep function on this thing. Um, I, I, I never use it, but you don't want to put it to sleep. All right, you want to grab your shutdown and we're gonna shut it down from there all right okay powers off now you can tell with my board it's got LED lights that I have uh, that are on they actually stay on all the time changing colors so it's powered off the fans are off everything's off but you can still st still see if you do a shutdown you can tell my board has power to it because it's got the LEDs coming and going but that's just the LEDs on the board the computer itself CPU shut down, memory shut down, everything shut down. But you can see how even though you do a shutdown on your computer, on your uh, screen, your computer has still got power running to it, okay? So don't shut it down, and if you don't have lights that, that show up like this or a small LED on your, um, on your motherboard that says there's power in there, don't go in there and just start ripping stuff out. Shut the power off in the back, 
all right and unplug is what I would recommend but we'll show you I shut the power off the lights will go off we get to work all right power is off uh, plug is undone uh, is unplugged so we got no power at all can get to this computer so you don't screw something up you're gonna take your side panel off um, I've not seen any before you take both panels off this one's got a nice open um, plexiglass here so you can see what's going on um, we're gonna get in here and take this side panel off all at the same time we we'll take off this drive that's a uh, that's a MacBook probably should have done a video on that one too that's my MacBook Pro which fell apart but I need the information off the drive, so I put the drive in, and it's a whole other video uh, that I'm not gonna do. So anyway, um, so I'm gonna get all this stuff kinda out of the way to clean it up, because I just mounted it there to get the, uh, to download everything on it and then clean it. Um, and this is our video card back here. So depending on your setup, mine is pretty easy to, to open it here. You might need a screwdriver, depending if you got screws in the back or whatever. Mine have got thumb screws right here that'll just come right off. And actually stay connected to this panel right let me show you here okay and my panel just comes open slides back and that's that's the way that most the vast majority of them work whether you got an open window on it or not it's just going to slide back set that down and out of your way um, so you don't go breaking anything or everything fall apart okay so your your clip for your grounding uh, wrist strap hook it up anywhere anywhere on the computer except please don't connect it to the electronics on the computer don't go hey that looks good i'm gonna yeah, connect to the cpu or whatever or i'm just going to connect it to a resistor or a transistor or what i don't I even have transistors anymore do we i'm old school dude um and i'm an electrical engineer i should know better so anyway the transistors are all inside you can't get to them that's a whole other video as well um or you know your capacitor or something just don't hook it up to your board and your electronics don't be stupid about this okay don't be stupid so I'm gonna go in here and uh, get myself hooked in. And like I said, I'm, I, I'm hooking it in at the bottom. See if y'all can see where I am down here. Yeah, you kinda, you kinda can't, can you? You kinda can't. Let me get this. So I'm coming to the, the bottom right here. Still metal. Don't hook it into plastic, okay? Some of these pieces, like these, these slides right here for your hard drives, um, these are plastic covers. You just connect to those, you got nothing. Connect it straight to some of the metal. Usually the frame is the best way to go. So I'm gonna hook up down here and keep myself connected as long as I'm working on it. So the first time we get this, some of this out of the way, then we'll go after our, um, I'm sorry, I'm bringing this up for you. So I'm gonna get my hard drive I was working out of the way. Then we're gonna go after our video card. This is our video card right here. Most of your computers, video card is gonna be the largest card. It's called a daughter, it's called a daughter card. It's gonna be the largest daughter card that's in your system for the most part, unless you got some kind of funky thing going on. Um, you can also hook up two of them with a bridge at this end if you need to. Some systems will do three of them. Um, this has uh, capability for doing three. I'm just gonna put one in here. A 1080 Ti will do everything I need. So let me go ahead and get this out of the way, make a little room here, um, and then we'll, we'll get our new card in. All right, one of the important things you need to figure out, especially if you're upgrading your video card, to a, to a bigger, uh, larger card you're trying to put two in, make sure your power supply, and some mine's down underneath here, can actually handle the card. Make sure that you have all the connections you need to hook up the power supply on the card. Um, this one in particular has got the eight and the six, you can see right here. Yeah, uh, Some of them have got eight and eight. Um, other ones require even other, more connections. Just make sure you have what you need. This is probably the most common uh, connection here the four um, and the six power connection um, hopefully your power supply if you're working at this with this level of a card hopefully you ha do have a power supply that's got them labeled right this one even says um, to VGA card right that's video graphics adapter card um, and this one has the extra piece so I said some of them are four and four this little power supply has got the extra piece here. If you got a four and four, you, you throw that one in. And I said, this one's gonna be, um, I'm sorry, you've got eight and eight. This one's gonna be eight and three. And you see this comes apart right here too, if you need to, to work the six and six. Okay, I keep saying three and four, but anyway, you know what I'm saying, four wide, but it's actually an eight pin plug and a six pin plug that we're gonna need for this. So unhook your power supplies. You can see I'm still hooked up right here. Um, 
All you really need is a Phillips head screwdriver to do this. Oh, another thing, when you're handling these, be careful with the back of them, as long as you've got static protection. They come in a bag, a static, uh, anti-static bag. The best thing to do is keep that bag out and then set them down on the anti-static bag like this. All right, if you have them, if you don't have your anti-static bag, which I don't know, the box is over there. It's, it's um, not right here where I can get to it. Um, then take it, carefully set it down like this every time. Touch this backside as little as possible. You don't want to cause any kind of static electricity. That's what the wristband is for. You could blow the entire card just by simply transferring some static electricity into the card and pop something that, um, a small piece in there and then you're done. So <clears throat> when I don't have the anti-static bag with me, like I said, set them down this way. So that's how I'm setting it down um, the whole time here. Well, let me get this other card out. And like I said, all you really need is a Phillips head screwdriver in most cases. <laughs> cases, get it? Cases, cases. Oh, that's all right. Um, that's all it's gonna take. There's this little bad boy, generally speaking. You're gonna have um, a screw back here, sometimes two, that holds your video card in. Okay, if you can see um, on the back, back here, let me get a better close up of this. See what we can do here. Oh, there we go. So we're gonna zoom in. There we go, right at the back of the card. We're looking right cheer, okay? That's what we're looking at. There's gonna be a, a screw right there that comes out. And then you're gonna have a lock on the back of the card. I'll show you once the card's out, it's easier to see. Um, you've got a little lock that you have to push down to get the card to lift up, all right? So let me get this card out of here and then I'll get a close up back there of the uh, PCIe bus connector so you can see what it looks like. All right, all right, another little um, tidbit before you um, take your card off and disconnect your video adapter or your, I'm sorry, your screen uh, from the back. I've got an HDMI cable that's hooked in here. Most of them have a little lock nowadays. It's got a little lock on the bottom. You gotta push that up, pull it up. But just be sure you get that out because you, you can't obviously pull the card out the front if it's hooked into the back. But just don't forget to take the, the connector for your, um, for your display, get that undone. And you'll see once you've, and I'll show a close up of the little uh, clip there that you've gotta push down. But once that's all done and your screws out of the back, it simply just lifts right out. Okay. If it's not lifting right out, check your lock. This is the lock that you're after right back here. Okay, or that, well that's the tab for the lock. Um, so it should just slip right out. You shouldn't have to wiggle it back and forth and all that kind of stuff. And don't do that. If for some reason it's not sliding right out, look for your screws. Did you forget to disconnect, you know, um, take out your screw in the back? Did you forget to disconnect your um, connector for the display? Did you forget to undo the lock that's on the tab right here? Anything that might be you know, holding this still to the board because if you wiggle this around and you wrench around on this, um, this is not like working on the cars out there. Um, you can end up damaging your motherboard and then you've ruined your entire computer. Now you gotta rebuild the whole thing. So now I got this one out. We're gonna put the 1080 uh, Ti back in. Another thing, you should be able, when you're changing the card out, to put the new card right back into the, the PCIe slot where you took the other one out. Um, if your card's bigger, it's different, you're unsure of, um, of the slot that you're putting it into or it needs to go into, just get your motherboard um, documentation out or go to the website for the motherboard. It'll tell you exactly where you need to put it and then if you're doing dual or if you can do three cards, where you're gonna put them. But for single card, it'll show you the best PCIe slot to slide the single card into. Of course, if you got a um, proprietary kind of piece of equipment like a Dell or something like that, you might have to talk to them about, okay, which one do I use? But generally speaking, with the, all the cards, they're gonna have a PCI connector looks like this, right here. Woo, right across here, all right? Um, let, me, let me get a close up here, if I can zoom in, of what we were talking about. I got the water cooler on my CPU. I'll show you one of the lower ones. It's just easier to see from this angle. So when I zoom this in here, let me get you all fixed up here. Yeah, we'll get this going. Whoop, wrong way, we'll get this going right up in here. There you go. 
little positioning there. Sweet. Okay. So this is all back against the the motherboard that we're looking at here. All right. And this is one of our uh, PCIe slots here. And on the back of each one of them is this. Do you see that? Can you see that without my hand in the way? There you go. See how the thing pops up? That is made to go over that tab. And when you push in and push down, this will automatically slide up over that tab. If you don't reach your hand over the top of the, of the card while it's sitting in there, let me show you. If you don't, whoop, oh wait, we gotta zoom back out. Okay, sorry guys and girls. I'm making a mess of this. There we go, much better. Um, so if we, if we don't <clears throat> reach over and unlock this tab, it's going to be sitting in like this, right? You see another tab back here? You're going to reach across and pop that lock off. You keep pulling, you'll tear up the motherboard, you'll break off the tab, you'll damage something. But once you push that um, lock down, it'll slide right out. Okay. And then once you put it in, when you slide it in that way, you know, sliding up like this, it'll automatically pop that lock on top of that tab. Okay, so enough about trying to put the things in. Most of your larger cars today take up two, um, two spaces there in the back, see? It's a, it's a double. Um, so I'm just gonna slide this bad boy on in. All right, just to clear up a little bit of nomenclature on this thing, let's bring it up here. Um, I'm actually using the display port Okay, is what I'm using. See that one? You try to put a, I, mean, I misspoke. I'm not using HDMI. I'm using DisplayPort. Um, better resolution, um, quicker. So this is the older HDMI, which is still fantastic. Um, this is a much older um, TVI, I think it's called. Uh, all right, plug if you need to. Uh, but I'm using the, the DP, the DisplayPort. So anyway, I'm gonna slide them up in here. I like. That's right, chill. Okay, and we'll uh, we'll lock it down, hook the power up to it. Let me go ahead and get it in there for y'all. Okay, so we're we're in. It slid right in. Got a it's nice and uh, even against the board. I got a nice little snap when the lock back there popped up um, and went in. Got my screw in, tightened it down good and tight. And now I'm gonna go with the the power. I was gonna say what I've learned over the years. If you know, if you want to go ahead and close the whole thing up before you fire it up, that's fine. But having done this before, it's like, it seems like there's always something. Um, so I just leave the side off while I fire it up the first time, make sure it's getting power, make sure it starts upright. Now, um, let me go ahead and power it up, and then I'll show you where we go from there. Uh, once it's in, make sure you hook your, if you're using HDMI, like I misspoke, I'm using uh, DisplayPort. So let me hook up my DisplayPort um, output. Um, hook my power back up to the back of the computer, turn it on, let it start up, and then crank it up. And what's it about? The beautiful thing about plug and play, Windows 10 should pick this thing up. It'll go try to load a driver for you so you can at least see your screen and work. But in order to get the most out of your card, either take the disc that came with it, which is usually an outdated driver, but at least it'll make it better, or once you can pull up your screen, you know, the resolution might not be what you want, whatever. But go ahead and get onto the website. So I'll go to Gigabyte's website. They use most of them have a software that you can download on your computer that'll actually identify your card, find the best driver for your card and your OS, and give it to you. And it just all loads up and goes from there. Some of them are just so simple and so easy. Um, for the most part, Gigabyte, I've worked on their stuff a lot. They have a great website that has all that on there um, that can ID it. NVIDIA, if you if you have a, a card and maybe you're not getting what you want from the website, you can go to NVIDIA and download NVIDIA players. Now, um, most of the people who make the cards, this is an NVIDIA um, the chip that's in here. So most of them take the NVIDIA drivers and build their own drivers so you can get more out of the board. This board in particular is a gaming overclocking board. So I do want to go get what Gigabyte has and get some of their drivers and some of their software. And then I'll be able to tweak it and, and drive it pretty fast. Um, so let me go ahead and hook up the power and turn it on and make sure that I'm getting a, a screen. And then we go to Gigabyte and get ourselves some software. Okay, here we go, folks. We just installed some terrible cheap video card and it's not doing a daggum thing you paid it for because how are you gonna game with this, right? You just paid all this money for a 1080 Ti and you got this. 
Look, that's how it starts. That's the way you get in. Windows loads its best thing, gets drivers. Now you can see your computer. Now we go in from here, all right? And uh, yep, that's what's on my, uh, believe it or not, that's what's on there. So we're gonna um, get into here. Screen resolution is just for poo. Look at that, my, things are all over the place. Well, all we're gonna do is uh, Firefox, that's what I like to use, okay? Um, and there you are, now you're into Firefox. The resolution is just poo, but all you gotta do is go to Gigabyte, there they are, Gigabyte Global. And then you just search through, it's very easy. We're gonna search through here. I'm not gonna show it all to you because I'm hoping you guys, if you can handle YouTube, you can handle going on Gigabyte and finding the drivers. But you're gonna go in here under service and support. You're gonna be able, you can have it search for your own card. It'll find your card. If you know the card, you can just go find the drivers, download drivers, download software, and just let Windows do its thing. Um, and, and you should be fine. Like I said, don't panic when you put the card in and you get crappy resolution because that's what you got. Windows just loaded whatever the basic driver was to get it going. Now, actually, usually in this too, you could adjust the, uh, the resolution here and get a pretty good resolution. Maybe not the top resolution of the card. You're definitely gonna get the, not gonna get the top performance of the card or the GPU that's in there. So go on, go into the website for, for your card, get all their stuff loaded up. Or if you want to, you got the disc, load up the disc, but you're always gonna need to go back and check for new drivers, because generally the disc is outdated by the time it hits the um, hits the public, it's already behind on what drivers are actually online. Get the latest drivers that you need, okay? And you may need to go with a new card on board. Keep this in mind too. You may have to go in, update motherboard drivers, okay? Um, update chipset drivers, because especially if you're making a big leap in the cards, there may be some things that your board can do but isn't programmed to do or doesn't have the software, the drivers to do that the card can actually do. So it's a good idea to get in there and get all of the uh, necessary drivers on your motherboard uploaded too. So there it is. We're on Gigabyte. I'm going to download it. I'm going to get it rolling. I'll have my 1080 Ti. Be rocking and rolling with that. Um, gosh, thank you guys for watching, man. I appreciate it. Um, as of today, we're almost over a thousand uh, subscribers and I appreciate all your support. Um, and if you like this or this is helpful to you, go ahead and subscribe. I'll be uploading all kinds of stuff over the years um, and hopefully it'll all be helpful for you. That's just a uh, Dr. Shankopotamus putting the 1080 Ti into my uh, custom-built rig over here, and uh, I hope it was helpful. You guys have a good afternoon.